Welcome back everyone. In this video we got a 3D printer, build it into the truck and power it directly from our solar. So yeah, I'm a maker. Anyone who's followed the channel for any length of time will know we built our truck from scratch and uh, I've always been the guy making and building and doing stuff and one of the most uh, important tools to me back home was our 3d printer I use that thing for everything uh, it's the easiest and quickest way to make something out of nothing so uh, I was really heartbroken when we had to leave our old printer at home it was just too big it was a cubic meter and just far too big to take along with us and uh, in the rush to get out of Canada uh, it got left behind and so I was really missing having that uh, option that flexibility to be able to print whatever i needed on the road and this last thanksgiving i was given a generous donation by one of our supporting channel members and i decided to pull the trigger and get ourselves a 3d printer that i could build right into the truck and run it off of our 12 volt solar and so i got the easy 3d nano it was about yay big, it was super tiny, and it ran directly off of 12 volts. And so it looked super promising that that would be a good solution for me just to make little doodads and parts that I needed to uh, fix up whatever we needed fixing up. Uh, so I got that here in Mexico after much to do, and uh, I really wanted it to work, but it really didn't work. I had problems right out of the gate with the extruder. Uh, it was under extruding horribly. Uh, as you can see in this clip here, the uh, lines in the middle of this cube are supposed to be solid and they were just stringy and strandy and it was just terrible. And uh, I tracked it down to the extruder gear slipping on the filament and uh, that's just something I couldn't fix because it was a, a molded polycarbonate case for the whole hot end was all in one little heat melted together, heat welded case and it just uh, wasn't something I could fix. And so we ordered and just received our Ender 3 version 2 straight from Yulong Ding Dong, China. And I know how much you guys love our unboxing videos, so let's get this one open. We got the user's manual, won't be needing that. And there she is, the Ender 3 version 2. Now the astute among you will notice this isn't the original uh, version 2. I've made some changes to better suit our needs, so let's go through those now. Notable improvements over version 1 were they replaced the original pulley at this end with a adjustable tension pulley system on this side. Uh, the little LCD display is gone and they've replaced it with this beautiful uh, display and they've installed these uh, higher power, higher quality, meanwhile, 350 watt power supplies. All of which we will not be using. I've modified this printer uh, to remove this pulley uh, tension adjustment. I did that because the original stuck out to the right side of the printer quite a bit and that uh, is going to take up super valuable real estate. Uh, the next thing I did was got rid of the original hot end fan assembly. I uh, got rid of the loud fans that were there originally and put on these two uh, 40 by 20 millimeter ultra quiet fans. As you can tell, this printer's running right now. And you can barely hear the thing. Uh, the silent stepper motor drivers are fantastic. Much quieter than our old uh, reality machine at home. Uh, what else have I done here? I installed a lead screw bearing up here at the top just because this will be mounted rigidly inside our truck as we drive and I didn't want that screw waggle woggling as we drove and of course the power supply is not here uh, I'm running this currently off of uh, directly off of our batteries and uh, I'll get into some more detail on that later one other change I've made here is I've designed and printed these uh, extensions for these bottom 4040 rails uh, these space the whole printer out from the wall uh, so that this motor for the, uh, the y-axis doesn't protrude past the back of the printer. So this way I can put it flat up against the wall and fasten it 
obviously without the display. The other change I've made is uh, I've got a OctoPrint install instance running here on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's temporary, of course, dangling there. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a jiffy. First things first is I'm going to spin out two of these uh, four millimeter bolts from the top and I've got some studs that I'm going to uh, thread in here and then I'll have studs that I can put this through the panel which I'll show you in a moment and uh, suspend it from a spot. You'll have to bear with me and we'll go over there and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is our side compartment door, our electrical closet, batteries, water, drinking water, everything's in here. And this normally has some outdoor stuff, folding chairs, that sort of thing. And up in here is a little bit of a void that I oftentimes pack up junk and stuff that we need to take. Our volcano folding grill. And I usually pack it much more densely than it is right now. Uh, but it's hard to get stuff up in that little crevice and so that's where I'm going to mount our 3D printer. There are other reasons which will become more clear in just a few minutes. All right, so I've got all the kegs and stored bits mostly out of here and this is just kind of another view, give you another better idea of where it's going. It will be fastened up against this composite panel which is the underside of our bed and then those two black plastic blocks you saw will rest up against the front wall here with some L brackets to support it that way. So uh, I'm going to actually remove these panels here which are my dinette seat cushions uh, and that'll give you a better view from this direction. B-roll. <laughs> Okay, so this is our bed platform. These are our Froley bread springs we are super, super happy with. If you guys are interested in these, Froley actually gave us a discount code. Uh, I think it's Froley 20. Nope, it's not. It's ER 20, 20% off. Uh, I think that's right. Link is in the description if you wanna check those out. Uh, but I just point that out because I had to remove two of them temporarily. These are where the uh, bolts are gonna come up and I've got the printer here and hopefully all my big mouthedness saying it's gonna fit without any too much problems doesn't come back to bite me in the keister and now I just spin on some nuts I 3d printed little wing nut holders for these so they just turn on there now these studs are obviously too long. They're sticking up through the floor about an inch. So I'll need to trim those down here in a moment. But now, Trardar. A little bit dingy and dark in there. But I do have some LED lights I'm gonna install in here. And uh, obviously I need, still need to support the back against the wall. But that's about where that's gonna go. All right, it's been a couple of days and uh, I've got it mounted nice and solid. What I did was cut some aluminum bar. I was able to find a length of aluminum bar here and I cut a length and threaded it uh, with bolts and then bonded it to our composite panels which make up the front wall. And then this L bracket I found at a little Tienda uh, construction store and so it's bolted into the aluminum plate and then T-slots in these extrusions uh, have accepted these two bolts here. And so it's bolted in on both sides. And as you can see, it's super solid. Uh, I did get some questions in the comments of the last video how I intended to keep this thing intact, rattling down the off-road roads that we do. So that's part of my uh, solution, I hope, is that by keeping everything nice and solid and rigid uh, that It'll keep it from rattling and then the the moving parts that need to remain movable like the gantry and the bed uh, I've written some custom G code that parks the head onto a foam block and locks everything in place with a little bit of cushion So the other thing I did uh, you might be able to tell is I've added six LED light strips in here and these are controlled by my uh, 
Todd boards which allow the printer to turn the lights off and on which is great because when I access uh, the printer from this hatch up in here from inside the truck uh, I can see inside this crevasse very nicely and uh, also the printer has control of the lights as I said so the time lapses are nice and evenly lit with artificial light uh, which is great because I tried doing some time lapses outdoors uh, with natural light and just the clouds and the fluctuation with light really makes it uh, strobific -erific. so expect some nice time lapses ahead okay one other thing I've done in here is I've got a Raspberry Pi camera on a little flexible arm ball arm and uh, that's of course connected to the Raspberry Pi but since this is the longest length of flat ribbon cable I have uh, it's just kind of dangling here by its wires and uh, one of the other campground friends we have here, Stefan, he was just mortified that I had left my berries dangling. So it doesn't matter if you've got this uh, bigger berries or the smaller uh, berries, you really need to have them supported uh, so that they're not hanging. <laughs> it's hard on them. So uh, that's one of the first things we'll do is print a bracket that will mount this berry up here against this arm. And then uh, the next thing I want to do uh, and I'll show you, will be a good example for CAD, is down here in our floor, I've recently needed to cut a hole for some new wires and tubing that's coming up through here. So you can see the exposed plywood and honeycomb composite panel, but I would like to have a uh, bulkhead tube fitting that fits in here. One last thing I almost forgot is the power supply. I mentioned earlier I've removed the 110 volt power supply, the original uh, meanwhile supply and we're powering it off of our solar and batteries via this 1500 watt DC to DC step up converter. So this takes 12 volts in off of our batteries switched by our uh, Todd boards and uh, converts that to 24 volts which then runs up to the printer. Uh, I want to get more into this later but I think I will save all the DC to DC conversion stuff for another video. Uh, I am also aware I could have converted this printer to be 12 volts by putting in a, a 12 volt heater cartridge and uh, and just dealing with the slower uh, heating of the the print bed, uh, but I decided to keep it 24 volts just so I had fewer variables when messing around with something. Uh, and also I need 24 volts for other things, so having this step up converter is uh, going to be interesting for future videos, uh, but we'll leave it at that for now. I just wanted to point out that I uh, have it mounted here. I did some 3D printed brackets which are mounting it nice and firmly here to this back plane. All right, inside the truck now and at the computer. This is where I do all my work, 3D design, and uh, eat lunch. But uh, it's also how we access our 3D printer. So this rear seat back cushion here uh, used to be mounted rigidly, it was just bolted to the frame, uh, but I've 3D printed these PETG brackets uh, with just a square hook on there and those reach up behind the aluminum frame and hold it firmly in place and then when I want to get in there I can just throw it up here on the bed and then I've got good access to the printer. Okay gang, here's another view inside the uh, compartment where the printer will be living. Uh, as you can plainly see, I've printed all of our channel member names right on the print bed by modifying a 3D printer into a 2D printer. And uh, also, you might have noticed on the uh, right side here, I was able to find a way to get the original LCD display to fit in a more compact way. I just needed to print these little adapters, spacers that uh, allowed the original steel pin from the back of the display to ride inside the T-slot and then it spaces it out so it's held in there nice and firm. Again, I don't really use it that much. Uh, with Octoprint it's not necessary, but uh, I've got it there in case I need manual controls for whatever reason. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, when we're traveling we want to be able to park the print head so it doesn't slide around and move and get jostled around. So as you can see on my screen here, uh, this is my Octoprint install, and I've written three, well, two relevant uh, codes here, park on foam block and unpark on foam block. And so uh, when I run this, you'll be able to see the printer uh, homes all its axes, just so it knows where it is for reference.
and it presents the, the uh, print bed just so I can install the foam block here. Gives some tones just to indicate it's ready. Moves the print head up so it can clear the block. And then sets the gantry down on that foam block, compressing it just a little bit, and then it disables all the stepper motors. I doubt anyone will want this code, but I will post it on our website, everlanders.com. And as you can see, the print head, if there is some friction there, uh, just on the foam behind. It doesn't want to move. The bed has some movement, but really doesn't want to move. And that's all fine and dandy. Then when we go back here to Octoprint, when I'm ready to print something, I just hit Unpark from Foam Block and it lifts the head up out of the way far enough so that it clears the foam. And ready to go. All right, so let's jump into designing a part. Let's uh, support them. Raspberry Pi. Uh, first thing is uh, you need the measurement of the shaft that uh, you want to clip the support onto. So I've shown that here, 11.9 millimeters is the, uh, the diameter of that shaft. And then center to center here is 49 millimeters, and that's for the hold to hole center on the Raspberry Pis. So that's the shape that we need. And then to extrude it, you can see here, I've got it uh, set to extrude seven millimeters. So just to show you, if I set this to 30, it would extrude 30 millimeters. But seven is fine for this, it's more than enough. And boom, there's a part. Uh, then I just punch two holes in it here. And those are the uh, holes that line up for the Raspberry Pi. All right, so once you got the part designed, you save it as a STL or stereolithography file and import it into your favorite slicing software. Now I'm most familiar with Cura, that's what I'll continue to use. And uh, basically what slicing software does is takes your three dimensional part and slices it into as many layers as is needed for the 3D printer to print sequential layers and stack them one upon each other. Uh, so here you can see the part in the software. And uh, here as I scroll through the layers, you can see it's got solid perimeters, pretty sturdy perimeters, and uh, this orange color in the middle is infill, which is hollow but still strong center section. So you save uh, filament, don't need to print part solid, it prints uh, hollow as needed or as you set it. So there's that ready to go. Uh, it's calculating I need four grams of filament or 1.29 meters of filament and it will cost 12 US cents and take 34 minutes to print. So 34 minutes later we can reach down into our grown up easy bake oven and there's a part. Now I just printed one at a time just to make sure it fits and is going to work well. Uh, so once I confirm this fits on the pie nicely we'll print off another one and then we can support our Raspberry Pi. All right, now let me show you the Raspberry Pi in its final temporary home. As you can see, I've got this uh, small rig. It's a camera equipment arm, but it sits here. And then I can position the Pi and the camera anywhere as needed and tighten it down. And as you can see on the Octoprint screen, I now have a webcam showing the uh, print bed area. And if I was to home the head, for example, I'm able to watch it remotely. And this is also how I record some of these time lapses. Although it's not the very best camera, it's sufficient for this sort of stuff. Okay, so admittedly, that's a pretty simple part. Let's do another quick and easy part. Uh, so the software I'm most familiar with is SolidWorks. I'll show that on screen here now. Uh, we'll just get into a little more detail on this one. Uh, I basically just need a tube uh, with a little flange on it. So 
To do this, I draw a 60 millimeter disc, extrude it two millimeters, perfect. And then on that, I draw another circle from the center, the diameter of which is 50 millimeters, which happens to be the only hole saw I have along with us, which is why all of my holes are 50 millimeters. Uh, and then I need to extrude this 53 millimeters. So now I've got this little top hat. Uh, and then we drill a hole through it. And so in the center now, we'll drill a hole through the middle that's 45 millimeters in diameter, which will leave us two and a half millimeter walls. Cut, blind, through all, giver. So there's the basic shape of it. And now we can fill it, these edges. Oh, look at that. Whoops, two millimeters. I actually wanted both filleted. So nice. Look at that. So admittedly, I've just designed a piece of PVC tubing. Uh, and if I had chunks of tubing along, I could just use that, but we don't. Uh, and further, I want a little cap to fit in there. So let me show you that now. I've designed this uh, off screen, but I've made these two little half circles. And when we mate this piece to this piece, and this piece to this piece, and this piece to this piece, you can kind of get a sense of the uh, three circular circles. This will be a water line, a large gauge wire, a smaller wire, and two other smaller wires. And these two uh, halves will fit thusly. All right, so here's a basic tube with the uh, split cap thing that holds the wires and tubing in place. So next we need to send this through the slicer and then to the printer. And then a couple of hours later, we've got the part. Now this one has a little bit of stringing. Uh, this is largely due to the time-lapse uh, intersecting the code and pausing, but that's really quick to take a sandpaper and wipe it off. Okay, today is tomorrow. I've given these parts a quick sanding and then a spritz of clear coat, uh, both to make it feel and look nicer, but it also helps bond the layers together a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, and then also these two half circles that clamp onto the uh, tubing and wires. And here it is ready to install. Uh, I'll put in a clip of that being installed here now. And so this is a very basic part, very boring and bland, but uh, I'll show you now some examples of other things I've printed recently. This was actually done by my friend Taylor back in Canada, uh, and he sent that to me when Kara went to Canada and came back. But uh, it turns out that this TS-100 uh, is a very popular soldering iron, and three other guys in the campground have them, and so I've printed cases for some of the other guys here for those as well. This I actually printed for our friends Christian and Asha, whose rig tour we did a video of up here. You can go check that out. And uh, this connects, or rather adapts, a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket to their wall switch plate, the, the standard European style that they were using. So that uh, spaces it out for reasons, uh, but that's just something you can't buy. And so I was happy to be able to make this for them. The next thing are these little buck converters. This one I use for my soldering iron to convert 12 volts from our uh, house batteries up to 24 volts so that the soldering iron can operate at peak wattage. And uh, these are cheap little DC to DC converters, but a little bit janky to have connectors just soldered on. And if I set it down on something metal, I need to be really careful that I don't short it out to anything. And so 
printing nice little cases like this. Uh, make something that's homemade and terrible looking look a little more professional as well as a lot safer for shorting out as I mentioned. The next thing are these LoRa communicators. I've touched on briefly in the past. Uh, we have a video coming up on that hopefully here in the future, uh, but they come as these bare circuit boards with a battery holder and antenna and such. And so uh, this is a work in progress. It doesn't have the screen yet, but uh, to print cases like this, or here's another variation, uh, just to have a, a plastic case that you can manhandle it just a little bit more is uh, certainly nice. And again, something you can't buy, uh, you have to be able to produce it yourself. And here's another example of that 50 millimeter hole saw. I have a tube running through our bed platform for my CPAP breathing anti-death machine. And uh, it's just a 50 millimeter hole cut through the composite panel. So I printed two of these, one half for top, one for bottom in complementary colors for the uh, panels they're going up against. So this will finish that hole really nicely and give nice filleted edges for the tube to run through. And these are little brackets I printed to hold a uh, DC to DC power supply for the aforementioned CPAP machine. This will hold it in place and hold it up against the uh, panel where it's dangling around right now, keeping it nice and firmly in place. So there's another example of a quick print just to hold something. And of course, uh, there's little doodads that uh, you don't really need, but they're kind of nice little things to have. This is a, just a Thingiverse print for a ratcheting uh, toothpaste squeezer tube. I've printed a handful of these and they're fun little trinkets to give away to friends and gave some away for Christmas and so on. So just little doodads like that, nice and handy things. A friend of ours has a, a set of calipers that he had in his toolbox, really nice set of analog stainless steel calipers, uh, but he had no case for them. So it was just wrapped up in a, a rag. And so to be able to print him a nice case like this was very nice. And then our other neighbors on the other side, the Nomads, they have a 12 volt transfer pump that they use to pump water from the plastic jugs up into their main tank. And it had a toggle switch on it that was just dangling there by its wires. So we drew up a quick bracket and it holds it all in place, keeping the wires nice and secure and uh, the switch nice and rigid so it's easy to use. They also wanted to install a fan behind their refrigerator and there was originally a vent built into the side of the camper there, but really no good way to mount a fan inside that vent. So to be able to print off a nice little adapter like this so that they can mount that fan in there permanently and uh, make a good seal so it's as effective as possible, it's really great to be able to help other people and that's something I really hoped I would be able to do and it's turning out that I can, so that's really nice. They also wanted some little wire holders to keep uh, USB cables for charging various things neatly tucked against the side of their table and the wall. So as you can see, these turned out really nice and they just uh, allow the wires to drop down. And then when they need something, they grab whichever cable they need and they can plug in their device right at the table. All right, another quick thing I did was uh, made mounts or little clips that hold our hiking poles. I used to have these just bungee corded up against the back of the door here, uh, but I've printed these uh, clips out of PETG, which is a little bit flexible. And so they just clip in there. And when we're ready to hike, grab a pair and go. All right, so that's a little overview of what I've been up to lately. A little bit of a taste of 3D printing. If you had no experience with it, now you should have a basic understanding of how this all happens and uh, converting a 3D printer to run off of our solar and batteries. Uh, it's been actually running for a couple weeks here and uh, works like a champ. So that's really amazing. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our legendary uh, channel members. Your support means the world to us. All of your comments are heartwarming. We still read everyone. And uh, if you're interested in having your name scribbled on stuff we're up to and a shout out in the video, uh, consider pressing that join button down below. There's three uh, membership options available for you. Uh, the price will vary depending on your country, but will be shown in your home currency. So check that out if you're interested. Leave a comment if you made it this far. Let me know what you thought of the video. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.